Hi, I'm Nate Bronner with the Virginia Cooperative Extension and the Master Gardener Program, and I'd like to welcome you back to my garden, or in this case, my seed starting table. Uh, it is today a very cold and dreary day in Virginia. There's, um, there's a lot of rain coming down, and a lot of people wouldn't normally see a day like today and think, let's start some seeds. And if you're thinking about plants like tomatoes and zinnias, you're right. This is not a great day to be starting seeds. But if you're a native plant, then a day like this is actually a perfect day to be starting seeds or be thinking about it. Let me explain why. Lots of the native plants that live in our area here are used to dropping their seeds in the fall and those seeds get damp and cold for an extended period of time. And that helps break down the seed coat uh, that's around that seed so that when the temperatures warm up and the water starts to penetrate the seed, it can then, the, the um, material inside, the genetic material inside can start growing and uh, maturing into a seedling. Uh, that won't happen unless it goes through that cold and damp period called stratification. Uh, lots of times you'll see people take seeds that are for native plants and they'll get them cold and damp, put them in their refrigerator for 30 days, and then they'll take them out and try and germinate them. But there's another way to do it that's considerably easier, I think, and I'd like to share that with you. Uh, you're going to need a couple of things and not many. You're going to need a plastic container like this. This was a strawberry container uh, along with the lid. Uh, that container needs to have holes on both the bottom and on the top. If it doesn't have holes because, say, a spinach container, that's uh, you want them to be about four inches tall. A spinach container won't have that, but you can just grab a trusty uh, drill with a quarter inch bit and drill a couple of holes in it. Please be careful with that. And you'll be set. All it needs, holes on the bottom, holes on the top as well. You'll need a single sheet of paper towel. You'll need the seeds that you're going to be starting, and you'll need a some potting soil. You want potting soil, not soil just out of your garden, because you want a sterile medium that doesn't have other seeds in it, and also a very nice and light and airy medium that those seeds will do the best, or they have their best chance of germinating in. So let's get started with that. I'm going to take my... Uh, container like this that has holes in it and I'm going to put a single layer of paper towels at the bottom. Um, in this case this container is a little um, small so I tore that paper towel in half, did not put that whole other half in it. I'm going to put that to the side and I'll use that with another one. Why do I want to do this? Because as I add soil to this I don't want that soil falling out onto the ground in my house where other people in my family might not be as happy with me if I make a mess in the house. And then I'm going to have to be cleaning it up. No one will be happy then, so why don't I just uh, make it easier by putting that paper towel in. That paper towel will get nice and wet, and uh, it will let the water move through it, and eventually it's going to break down, and you won't even know that you had one in there. But, um, but the damage, uh, you'll keep the damage from being done inside the house. And I'm going to put about a half inch of that potting soil in here. Um, nice and fine, light and airy. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to leave plenty of room for those seedlings to germinate. And then I'm going to be looking for my seedlings. Now, throughout the year, I collect seeds uh, in my yard. If I go on a walk, I happen to go buy a flower that I like, and I see that it has already bloomed, and the seed pods have dried and are sitting there on the plant. I'm going to say... Um, I like to collect those because those are free seeds for me. And, um, and as long as I know what it is, I save them in a brown paper bag like this in a cool, dry place. And when it comes to this time of year, I'm going to break them free. That also works with milkweed, with bee balm, with all sorts of natives. So I'm going to take one of these little seed pods here. I'm going to break that off of this. And then I'm going to crush that into my palm. And I don't know if you can see this as I crush it. But it looks like I've got tons of little seeds here in my palm. Tons of tiny little seeds. And I'm just going to shake all over this. Uh, there were probably a good four or five dozen in that seed pod. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean that I can't take another couple of these and break them off into here and spread tons and tons of these seeds all throughout here. Because on each one of these plant uh, stems that I cut off, they had literally dozens of these seed pods like this. So it's not going to hurt me to take a couple of those off, 
crush them, break them open, spread the seeds around. Try and get it uh, spread out as evenly as I can in here. Uh, so I'll have lots of places for those, lots of elbow room for my little seedlings to grow up and, um, and get spread all around there. So now that I've spread these out, uh, this is beard tongue, by the way, which has really pretty little flowers that come out mostly in the spring and then again sometimes in the fall. So I'm going to spread these out here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some more potting soil, or in this case, I'm going to grab a little bit of peat moss and vermiculite, which is super ultra fine. And I'm going to spread that over the whole mix. I don't want to make it very deep. In fact, with beard tongue, I hardly want to cover it at all. But I did want to put a little layer on. Then I take my uh, spray bottle filled with just water, and I'm going to wet this down. Why do I want to start with a spray bottle? Well, because of as all of us know who have ever used a sponge before, a dry sponge does not absorb water very well. And, but a wet sponge, if you've taken the time to uh, uh, wet it first, that will absorb a lot of water. And so peat moss and potting soil work much in the same way. Whereas if I get it a little wet first and give it a little break, then it will swell up and it will be much uh, better at absorbing the rest of water at the rest of the water than I'm going to be giving it. After that, after I wait a little bit, I can come back over it and I can spread a little bit more um, water across the top. I want to get it nice and wet. After that, I'm going to take that lid, which I put around here someplace, and I don't see it right now. I'm sure it'll turn up sometime. I'm going to put that lid right back on top of this. Um, once I've done that, this is ready to go, and I can put it out in the garden. The one other thing that I want to do is I want to label it, because chances are I'm going to forget what this is. So I'm going to tear off a little bit of duct tape. I'm going to put it right here on the side. And then I'm going to take that trusty Sharpie right here, and I'm going to write what it is right here on the label. So this is Beard Tongue. And that's it. I put it out in the garden. And what, now where do I put it? On a day like today where it's going to be cold? Yes, cold and wet. I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it out in the garden where it's going to get exposed to the cold and freezing temperatures, where it's going to get rained on, where the sun is going to hit it when it warms up. And I'm going to forget about it. I'm not going to have to do anything else until about the end of March and the beginning of April when I'm going to go back and I'm going to take a look at this. And it's going to have lots of seedlings germinating in it. They're going to be sprouting up and, and taking off, and, and they're going to be growing in there. I, I won't have had to do any maintenance on this at all. As they grow up, and as they get a little bit bigger, when they get their first set of true leaves or their second set of leaves, I'm going to take a little uh, trusty chopstick here. I'm going to lightly dig underneath them, lift it out, being very careful of the seedling and the roots, and I'm going to take it and put it in its forever home or into a... Uh, a potting cup that I can pot it up in and it's going to go ahead and grow and I'm going to have hundreds out of this hundreds of seeds uh, that I just that were free to me uh, all of these seeds that I spread out in here all of these seed pods that I take and I break open they're going to do just fine in here and it didn't cost me anything for these seeds free plants native plants that are great for our pollinators this also works well for cilantro uh, I tried growing cilantro indoors for a number of years. I would get lukewarm. Uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get really good germination rates with it. But if I take that cilantro and I put it out in the garden, I put it in this, cover it with a thin layer of soil, maybe about three times the width of the seed, cilantro will grow up in here too. And you will have all the cilantro plants that you could ever want. So uh, I'd encourage you to use this technique for cilantro as well, or any other native plants. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments below, or you can call the Cooperative Extension Office at 890-4940, and we'll try and get you an answer to your questions. Thanks for joining us again in my garden.